Throughout this unit, we've been studying similarity, specifically similarity in triangles. So now we're going to use triangle similarity to prove theorems about triangles. The first theorem we're going to prove is the Pythagorean theorem, which we have been using throughout the entire year. And now we can use similarity to prove the Pythagorean theorem. We look over here at the right triangle, and there's an altitude drawn into the hypotenuse, which we discussed created three right triangles, all of which are similar. So if we draw them over here, I have the large right triangle, we'll have our medium-sized right triangle, and then we have the smaller right triangle. This just allows us to see which sides are uh, proportional to which, and which angles correspond to one another. So if you look at the big right triangle, the hypotenuse has length C, the long leg is A, and the shorter leg is B, and let's mark these angles. So we have this angle here would be corresponding to there. And then this angle will correspond here. So now if we look at the medium-sized triangle, we have the hypotenuse of the medium-sized triangle is A. The long leg would be E. And the shorter leg, oh, we don't have anything for that. So we'll just skip that. If we look at the angle measures, this has a common... Uh, angle there with the larger right triangle. And then if we go to the smaller right triangle, this hypotenuse would be B. The short leg is D. And then we don't know what the long leg is for the smaller right triangle. However, we do know that these angles share this angle measure. Now we talked about before, we know these are similar because if in a triangle, if these two angles are congruent to these two angles in the triangle, the third angle theorem says that the other angles must be congruent as well. And the same thing can be applied here. So we know that actually all three of these triangles have congru corresponding congruent angles, which means that they are similar. We want to now use this to prove that for this right triangle, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So our goal is to prove a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, in order to do the formal proof, you would have to prove that these triangles are similar, but we've already done that. So we're going to skip that step and just make a little note here that we are assuming that we have already proven triangles are similar. And now we want to use this to prove the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to assume that they're similar and go from there. We know that if two triangles are similar, then their corresponding side lengths are proportional. What I'd like you to do as we do this proof is to pause the video anytime that you can write the step yourself and then see what we have written here when we go over it together. So we know the side lengths are proportional. Trying to determine what side lengths or what proportions would you write. What I will set up is C over A, so the hypotenuse over the long leg is equal to the hypotenuse over the long leg in the medium side triangle. And we know that over here you have the hypotenuse in the short leg. So in this triangle that we're trying to prove the Pythagorean theorem for, we'll use the hypotenuse in the short leg. C over B is equal to B over D. I'm going to leave the reasons blank right now, and then I would like you to try and fill out all the reasons on your own, and then we'll check our answers together. So from there, whenever we have proportions, often we like to make it so that the equation does not have any fractions, and to do that, we multiply. Now in this equation, if we multiply both sides by AE, and I can do that, this AE. I will notice that the a is divide out to be 1. I will left and be left with c e equals, on this side, the e's divide out, I'll have a times a, or a squared. So c e is equal to a squared. And if I do the same thing on the other side, multiply both sides by the common denominator, b d multiplied on both sides, then when these divide out, I'd be left with CD equal to, these divide to be 1, B times B is B squared. A lot of people will say that this is cross multiplication, but all it really is is multiplying by um, both denominators. 
So then from there, we are going to take this equation and we are going to add b squared to both sides. So if we have c e equals a squared, we are going to add b squared to both sides. Now we have a squared plus b squared, which is great, because that's what we want. We at least want that on one side. Over here, we somehow to get, need to get this to look like c squared. So what we can do is substitute in. We know that b squared is equal to cd. So this guy right here, we're going to substitute in. And we will get that ce plus cd is equal to a squared plus b squared. Now we're getting closer, we see more c's here, but we don't have this completely by, or written as c squared yet. So what we're going to do is we can factor out a common factor. That common factor is c, and we're left with e plus d in parentheses when you factor out c. Now we're thinking, well, how can we get this to be c squared? We know c squared is really just c times c. So is e plus d equal to c? Because if it is, then this side would be c times c or c squared. And in fact, when we look at our picture up here, we find out that it is equal to c. So we know that segment addition postulate says e plus d is equal to c. And now we can substitute in ED, or for, sorry, substitute C in for ED, and we will get C times C is equal to A squared plus B squared, or in other words, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And there's our Pythagorean theorem. Now, up here, I have it written as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but we can just switch that because we know that if a equals b, then b is equal to a, and there is a property that states that. And here is our proof of the Pythagorean theorem using similar triangles. What I'd like you to do right now is to pause the video and try and come up with the reasons for each one of these statements. Now that you have tried this on your own, Let's go through these together. We said that if we have similar triangles, then the corresponding side lengths are proportional. It allows us to write a proportion. From there, we cross multiplied but really all it was was multiplying both by both denominators. So this was multiplication property of equality. From there we had an equation that we added b squared to both sides. That would be our addition property of equality saying that if you have an equation you can add the same value to both sides and it will still be equal. After that, we substituted in CD for B squared. So substitution property of equality. And then, once we saw that, we factored out the C. And really, we just know that is the reverse of the distributive property. Well, then we saw that we knew that e plus d, if we look back in our picture, was equal to c using segment addition postulate. And then we could substitute in for e plus d.
Once we substitute in, we know that c times c is c squared. And I don't really have a good reason for that, other than it's the definition of what an exponent is. You're not going to see that on any proofs on quizzes or tests. And then from here, this would be our symmetric property of equality. And here's the proof for the Pythagorean theorem. 